Hi, you ten. Hi, you ten. Welcome to Plipped Classroom number two. Number two. Numero duo. <laughs> um, today, Miss Scott and I are going to be taking you through the finer points of epic theatre mm -hmm. and Brechtian acting techniques. Yes. Yes. Well, as we know, Brecht believed that theatre should engage more directly with the social and political climate of its day. Um, you, as we said last lesson, he was a very serious man, living in very uncertain times. And I guess um, for him, the idea behind epic, epic theatre was to make theatre that created a picture of the world. Um, he wanted to turn spectators into observers and force them to face something. He hoped that epic theatre would arouse um, some desire in his audience to take action against things that were going on. Because, as Miss Scott just mentioned, remember the historical context with which Brecht is operating in. So Europe is incredibly unstable, politically, socially, and even economically. Okay, so epic theatre is such an uh, such a an acute reaction to the climate with which he's living in. Okay. Um, the way Brecht, sort of at the heart of Brecht's theatre, is this concept of didactism. Okay, he took a didactic uh, approach to um, creating his performances, and didactic means that it, well, didactism is the instruction or teaching of a moral lesson. Okay, so he wanted his audience to come away from the performance with a, I suppose, an understanding of the moral lesson that he was trying to teach. It's almost lecturing in a way, I suppose you could see, but um, it was much more active and required his audience to be much more proactive when watching theatre compared to, say, melodrama that came directly before it in terms of styles. Uh, 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 sorry, I'll just get the next thing. Okay, the didactism in um, Brecht's epic theatre was created by a very uniquely Brechtian technique called the, here we go, the Fumdungs effect, otherwise known as the alienation effect or technique. Okay, and this was purely Brecht. Brecht created this, and the idea being, as it says, he wanted his audience to feel alienated from what was going on on the stage, okay? He wanted them to be shocked out of their passive observance and to be confronted by, by what was happening and not be able to have emotional ties with what was going on on stage. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? I would agree. Yeah. So, well said. Thank you. Um, and so with... Uh, Brecht's alienation effect he relied really heavily on that idea that we've sort of touched on but we're going to explore more today and in class but that idea of breaking down the fourth wall of performance which is something that you guys should be familiar with from drama that that fourth wall being the wall that separates us and the audience so Brecht wanted to constantly remind his audience that they were watching a performance that they were watching something because they needed to um I guess, take it in and analyse what was going on on stage because it was making a, a comment. Um, to create this alienation effect and break down his fourth wall, Brex used a number of different techniques. So we're going to go through them today and then the hope is that when we come into our workshop, you guys will have a base understanding and we can um, practically explore some of them. So the big one and the main one is this idea of justice. So justice is, again, uniquely Brecht. He created this idea and it's a technique that has come um, directly from his theatre and something that still is really, really um, common, I guess, and well known in theatre circles today. So justice is difficult to explain, but essentially it's a, a theatrical technique that uh, helps define the emotion within a character and, and the events at the same time. So it's a, it's a gesture, it is a, it is a movement, um, but it's... It's a movement on stage that has a lot more deeper symbolic meaning and that, that is reflective of the context that the character that's performing the movement is in. Would you... Am I explaining that well, Miss Campbell? Yeah, no, I think that that's okay. I mean, and obviously I think justice is something that we really have to explore practically for you to understand it, so... Yeah, 
it's it just means a powerful action on stage that has a deeper meaning for the character performing it, and it it involves a fair bit of symbolism, which is something that you guys should understand. But it's that that idea of um, defining emotion of a character and their context at the same time, at the same moment. So defining the society and the person within it within one moment on stage. So you could even see it, I suppose, when looking at Nazi Germany, somebody marching across the stage in a, um, with a frog step march, so where they kick their feet out like Hitler, just like that. Um, Brecht actually has used that in plays, and that's a sort of... A, that's an example of justice. It has on. It has such significant meaning, and for the character that's doing it, it gives the audience, I suppose, an understanding of where they stand in a political standpoint. Yeah, from a political standpoint. Sorry. Okay. Next one. Um, next one is narration and song. So these are really big in all of Brecht's plays. He loved to use um, narration at the beginning of scenes and song as well sort of um, as a form, uh, as another form of narration. So his, the purpose of his songs were not to heighten emotion or for entertainment, but it was, it was to comment or narrate um, what was going on. So this idea of narration through song or, narration, or, or straight narration was again contributing to that, the alienation effect and the idea um, of breaking down the fourth wall and reminding our audience that we're watching a play. So le by letting our audience know exactly what's going on, they're constantly reminded that they need to be watching and reflecting on the action on stage. Um, and a ne the next one is lighting and staging. So Brecht uh, has some, had some unconventional lighting and staging sort of techniques for the time. Um, he did not use naturalistic lighting or set design as were sort of popular at the time in theatre. He didn't want um, naturalistic sets with regular props and regular costumes. He... he like to experiment with lighting. So, for example, um, he'd often use really harsh, unnaturalistic lighting, or maybe he would have the house lights up, so wouldn't use traditional theatre lights, down, down lights on the stage. He'd have bare lighting, bare sets, to remind our audience constantly that they're watching a play. Um, and even in some of his stage directions, you can see um, his, he's asked characters in the stage to move down towards the lighting rig, so he'd often have exposed exposed curtain rods or exposed lighting rigs just to, as a constant reminder for our audience that they were watching performance. Um, yeah, and I suppose a great example of why he felt like this is if we think about some of the TV shows that you guys really get into, for example, Breaking Bad, you feel it is so realistic and so naturalistic and that you get so emotionally involved that the lines between reality and fiction are blurred for you. And Brecht wasn't a fan of this. He was all about what was on stage isn't real, but you need to learn the lesson that he's trying to tell, okay? And so he really wanted his audience to be aware of that, and that's like Miss Scott was saying, okay? So he wouldn't have been into Breaking Bad. Well, maybe he would have been, but... It wasn't Not his a, style. It wasn't his style at all. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, and, yeah, I guess acting style of, um, in Brechtian times were very much in, in line with that idea, very much in line with that idea of breaking, uh, breaking down that barrier between the audience and the performer. Um, he, and we, as we've said a couple of times, but he came after the period of melodrama. So he wasn't into these over-the-top characters that were overly dramatic and um, really asked their audience to become involved in the emotion on stage. He, he didn't want completely believable portrayals of characters. He just, um, he, he, I guess Brecht believed that if the audience developed an emotional attachment to the character, then they couldn't quite evaluate the social realities of the play. So he wanted to keep the acting styles very simple and understated in order to, again, have his audience be able to reflect um, sort of impartially upon what was going on on stage. Would you... That. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I guess as we said as well in a, in a previous class, we talked about Stanislavski, um, who was doing realism, naturalism at the time, same time as Brecht. Stanislavski really wanted his audience to feel the emotion that the characters were feeling, whereas Brecht didn't want that. He wanted the audience to question or make a comment or interpret what was going on on stage, rather than getting swept up in the emotion of the of the fictional characters. He wanted them to be swept up in the emotion of the whole situation, sorry, That's because okay. it was their society that he was commenting on. 
Did you? Yeah, like, so for Mother Courage, he didn't want, um, as an example, he didn't want his audience to empathise and feel pain and hurt for Mother Courage. They wanted to see her as a... a he wanted the audience to see her for what she was, that she was placing money above the safety and comfort of his own family, okay? And that is didactism at play. He's teaching them the moral lesson, questioning what we, how we feel about whether what cost we put on our lives, what cost we put on those that we love, um, and whether it's morally right to do that. Yeah, and that last point is a nice one, but it's just that Breck didn't want to show the human nature of an individual but he wanted to reveal the co like collective human relations of the whole society, which is what was yeah specific to his acting style. Yeah. So. Okay, so the key things. Epic theatre, the big umbrella term. You need to remember the Verfundungseffekt. I cannot believe I've said that sort of thing two times. That's incredible. Um, or alienation technique or effect. Then we also have lighting and staging as some of his techniques. We've got Justice, which is the really big one and uniquely Brecht. Then we have... Narration and song. Narration and song. Um, and finally, his acting styles or acting techniques within that. Remember, you've got to whisk it. Watch, summarise, and come up with a question. See you guys.